Hello guys, in this video I'm going to show you quickly the basic tools in QGIS to create map layouts. For this exercise I'm considering that you already have some information to map and that this information has some style, which means that has wonderful colors and labels and so on. Hence, uh, I'm not explaining anything about mapping nor styling, but rather creating the actual cartographic document that you can print or show in a presentation and that conventionally you can call a map. The first step you want to do is to save your current map theme. This means your current styling, the way your main map view looks like. This includes colors, activated layers, labels, etc. On top of the Layers panel, click on the third icon, the one with the eye, and select Add Theme. I'm going to call this theme All Lakes. We are ready to go. Without further ado, let's start with the creation of a map layout. The canvas where you combine all the graphical elements or decorations that you can add to your map. In QGIS, a map layout is called print layout and you can create as many as you wish. You can either click on the project menu and then new print layout or you can click on the icon new print layout in the project toolbar or alternatively you can press ctrl plus p. Whatever you choose you will be prompted to write a name for your print layout. For instance, I can write here test. This will create a print layout called test and will open it so we can start editing it. I'm just going to close it now. You can also create print layouts by opening the layout manager, which can be opened either by clicking on the icon next to the new print layout in the project toolbar or going to the project menu and then layout manager. From here you can open, duplicate, remove or rename your print layouts or you can create new ones. First I'm going to delete the one that I just created by selecting it and then click remove. Then I'm creating a new one called Xochimilco. The layout is just like a piece of paper, a canvas. Before you start doing something it is a good idea to set up the size of this canvas. If you right click on the canvas, you will see an option that is a bit hidden, the, the page properties. Every, every item added to the layout can be accessed in the item panel, but for some reason the item called page is not. In any case, you can then modify the size of your layout, the orientation and so on. For now, I'm keeping the A4 size and the landscape orientation. The natural Next step is to add a map view, which will correspond to the map visible in the main QGIS window. Just select this tool or go to the Add Item menu and then Add Map and then drag a box of the size that you want on the layout. After some seconds you will see your image. If it is not selected, click on the Select Move icon and then click on the item you wish to select. In this case, the map you just added. Now that you can see its properties, the first thing you want to do is to change the name of this map view if you want to have more than two map views. This will make more sense when we add an overview map. To change the name, just scroll down the map properties until item ID and then name it. In this case, I'm calling it main. Okay, now I'm going to show you some properties that you use often. So the first thing to notice is the scale. Uh, the scale normally it's based on the map that you have here in the main QGIS window. So it copies the almost the same scale, but as you can see, well, our scale right now is one to 100,000. And the one that we can see in the layout manage, in the layout it's a little bit larger so eventually we can change this here just by changing the numbers and every time you change the scale of this map 
uh, eventually it will re render so it will take some time so right now it's okay the scale so from the from this uh, prop, uh, window we can also change the map rotation so sometimes this is useful if our features are in a different orientation so not uh, for instance a portrait rather than a landscape so sometimes it makes sense to change the map uh, rotation if you want to make this map look exactly as the one that is shown in the in the main QGIS window you can use these icons so to change the view for uh, so to match the extent you have to press the, this first icon which will make the extent of the main view to be the same as the layout so it's as we had it before basically so before we change the the scale so now we, our scale is the same but if we want to match the scale we can use the third icon which will make the scale of the main view to match this one so now it's again 100,000 or we can do the opposite um, so if we prefer the scale that we are seeing in the layout we can export it the, the extent or the scale okay so remember that we uh, added a map theme so we can make this uh, map to follow the map theme rather than just uh, change the values of the colors as we change it here so for instance right now if i change it so i'm gonna put it more or less like this so you can see the the difference for instance right now both are the same styles but if I change, let's, I'm going to remove the lakes. And then I update this view. I won't have the lakes anymore. But even if I, if my lakes are gone in this view, uh, because I save my theme, I can just tell this uh, layout that this uh, map view will follow the all lakes theme and now we can see the lakes so that that's the reason we want to create map themes so we can save predefined styles we can also change uh, or lock the layers so if we are not using themes we can lock the layer so every change that we make in in this view it won't affect the, the map view. And another useful um, thing that you want to notice if you are creating a map is to make a, uh, take a look at the grids. So for instance, if you want to add a grid here, uh, it will create a grid depending on the intervals that we defined here. For instance, every uh, 500 meters so it's more or less like that or every kilometer so it's more or less like that and then we can use um, a frame style so instead right now it's no frame but we can have a zebra or we can have exterior ticks and we can also have uh, the coordinates written but if we want the coordinates written probably we want less than one kilometer so let's say every five kilometers so these units uh, are based on the units of your projection so just be, uh, be aware of that so we can have a map like this one and then we can decide which um, sites wanted, uh, we want to be uh, greeted. So if we want the coordinates, for instance, uh, let's suppose that I don't want them here in the right hand side. So instead of, uh, I, I'm, go I'm, I'm gonna go to right and then instead of showing all, I'm gonna disable them and as well as in the bottom and in the case of the left hand side 
I'm gonna show them, but uh, instead of horizontal, it's gonna be vertical ascending. So we can save some space in this area. So that's about the, the grid properties. Just remember that this uh, considering your uh, coordinate system. And yeah, I think for, for this is uh, what I wanted to show you. Okay, so that's how I want it for now. Uh, a little bit uh, smaller, so I can put the scale below. And then again, the scale change. So I'm just going to... And then probably I want to change also the the colors of the grid because uh, it's very black. So maybe I want the colors a little bit lighter. So I can put some kind of transparency. Or I can even configure a symbol. So instead of transparency, I can change also the style. For instance, a dash line, something like that, or something like that. Well, it's on. It, it depends on you and what do you want. Now let's add an overview map. This step requires you to add a new map view. So first, let's add a new map view. And then, before we start working on an overview, let's simplify it since we normally don't want much detail on an overview. So without closing the layout view, let's go back to our main map view and deselect some layers. I will keep these layers at a minimum because I want a very simple overview map. Basically, I will keep only the lines and points related to the city and some raster files. Since I save my main map theme by changing the activating layers or even changing some styles, it will not affect the main map. After we finish with our styling for our overview map, we can also save it as a theme. Eventually, I'm going to call it overview. Now I will return to my layout view. Let's see the properties of this map. Uh, and first I'm going to change its name to overview. So I will scroll down and change its ID. Then I will add an overview. An overview is an overlapping rectangle that coincided with extent, uh, that coincides with the extent of the map we want to refer to. So go to the overviews uh, section within the map item properties. Click on the arrow next to overviews to see more information and then click on the green plus sign button. This creates an overview. And as you can guess, you can have more than one overview per map item. For now, let's keep it simple with just one. Double click to change the name of the overview and then go down in the draw overview section and in map frame select the map that the overview will refer to. In our case we call it main. After you select your overview uh, will turn mostly red. This is because both map views have almost the same scale. I'm going to change the extent of my overview map to a larger scale. So scroll up and change it. In this case, we want to achieve two things. To match the scale of the QGIS main map window to the print layout. And follow the map theme overview to lock the style of this overview regardless of future changes in our map design in the main QGIS window. Once we have that, what we can do is to change the style of the overview. So Let's go to the overview section and select the overview main that we just created. And then instead of having this frame style, we can just change it by clicking on this arrow, a small arrow, 
configure symbol and then instead of simple fill solid we can just put no brush and then the stroke color can be let's say red or we can choose anything really but let's keep it with red and stroke style solid and we can change the stroke width something like that and yeah that's it and we can change a different blending mode so if we want to keep uh, some kind of transparency here instead of having this red thing as it was we can do this configure symbol and then simple fill with brush but blending mode let's put it let's say screen so let's see how it goes that yeah well no it doesn't look very good so what happened if we put multiply yeah that looks better so now what we can do is to make a difference between the overview and the main map so let's just add it um, a frame yeah I think that's good just maybe a little bit uh, thicker there you go so more or less like that it's all right and now let's add a scale to this map so if you just go to this icon or alternatively go to add item menu and then add scale bar and then you just drag it as uh, you did it with the map So now this scale is not related to this map. So I put it here, but uh, I was wrong. So actually I want my scale more or less here. Now to configure the scale, uh, because it may appear small or big depending on its properties. Uh, well, we need to change the properties. So the first thing I notice is um, that it's too small so let's change that so we can change the style uh, right now it's a single box we can have a traditional double box scale or just a line with thicks in the middle or line with the thicks down or line with thicks up or lines uh, uh, scale with the step line something like that which is like a like snake or we can have a hollow one uh, that one looks good if you are minimalist minimalistic or you can also have a numeric scale so what if we want both so uh, if we want both we can put one scale let's say the numeric one at the end and just change this like that and then we can add another scale here so since every item needs to be inside the canvas we have to change either the the size of the scale to make it uh, fit in this space or we can change the size of the map so in this case we're going to change the size of the scale so let's start with the with the height so let's let's just change it a little bit something like that and I'm going to change also the numbers so let's go to number formats. Uh, I think that's all right. And let's go to display. And then let's put it closer with label margin. So, yeah, 
okay something like that and with the numbers a little bit uh, smaller so again display font and instead of 12 I'm gonna choose let's say 11 yeah something like that and then to change the size of the scale we need to change the um, the segments so right now we have zero segments to the left and two to the right what does that mean is that from zero it starts counting so if we want to add segments to the left it's from zero we have one two segments to the left and from zero we have one and two segments to the right and the difference of size is because um, the segments work differently depending on the kind of scale that you that you choose for instance double box is like this lines are like that so it's more or less half the size of the segment of the right okay uh, what we can do is to put uh, let's say a lines line thicks up something like that and then uh, in this case the units are in kilometers so every one unit is one segment so if we want let's say five units it's five kilometers and this way we can uh, make our scale larger and we can also have the right segment subdivisions something like that and subdivisions height something like that or something like that so this is the size of this of the middle one so as you can see it's highly a uh, custom custom customizable <laughs> the other standard map element is the north arrow there are many options for this but the most important is to select the arrow since all the rest are very intuitive however the north arrows in QGIS rely heavily in user input because most north arrow you have in RGIS or other software are actually copyrighted so uh, actually also RGIS North arrows are embedded as true type fonts so you cannot modify them in QGIS you have some options most of them without the letter N on them which is actually a clever and considerate thing uh, they did on purpose and I quote for languages that do not use an N for North so that they can use another letter in any case if not ugly, most of the time these designs may not be desirable. I'm talking about the north arrows available in QGIS. Nevertheless, if you need more styles, you can look for SBG, which is uh, Scalable Vectors Graphics, north arrow files on the internet in pages like uh, this one. And then you just have to download the SVG file and select it. The only issue with this is that most of the time you won't be able to change the fill and stroke colors. Although there is a simple workaround, uh, you just have to add some parameters to the SVG file. So in order to do this, open the SVG file you would like to use and you can open it not with the design program but in this case with a text editor I would recommend notepad plus plus then now once it's open you can use uh, notepad the normal notepad of Windows but I would recommend notepad plus plus because actually you have colors and so you, you more or less are have all these text uh, with styles that uh, help you to to navigate around the text so what you need to do once you have the file open the SVG file is to add the fill the outline and stroke width parameters to each path in the SVG file 
So the details are found in this web page. So I just copy and paste the parameters as written in the web page at the end of each vector definition or path. Uh, I leave the link uh, in the video description so you have the necessary uh, information to, to do your own uh, modifications. Alternatively, you can just use a PNG image with a transparent color, but eventually you won't be able to change its colors. So that's the reason we normally use SVG files in QGIS. Okay, if you have this problem, uh, it's because you wrote something weird in the in the file that you modified. So I just need to double check here. So for instance, um, yes. So I'm, before I put the information before the quotes, but it has to be after because it's a different thing. So basically, you just have to, to notice that it's at the end of each uh, a parameter a sentence uh, that it's defining the, the 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 graphic. So yeah, it was just a small mistake, but we can return here and then if we select it again, well, I'm going to select another one so it can be refreshed. There you go. And then now you can see that it's red, but uh, you can change it to any, any color that you want. Uh, this, in this occasion, you don't have a stroke color. So it also depends on what kind of um, how they how the SVG file was created? For instance, if I put this one, you can see that there is a stroke. You see? Well, but uh, in this case, we want a north arrow. So it's talking to so this one. Okay, so let's just keep it here. And there you go. But finally, uh, you want to add a legend. This can be done by clicking on the icon Add Legend or going to the Add Item menu and selecting Add Legend. The legend is automatically loaded with all the layers in your project. Um, well, the, the first thing we want to put in, in our legend is the title. So we can just put legend if you want. I mean, I, normally I don't use a title, but you can use a title. And what I normally do is to deselect auto update. So I'm able to delete everything that I don't want to be shown. So in this case, something that I don't want to be shown is um, all the information available in the OpenStreetMap database. So I'm just going to delete this one. The HydroNet, I will keep it. I don't want this one. And uh, I don't want also the the SRTM. I mean, this is just a choice. Okay, I don't want that. So the, the only layers that I want to be put in the legend are these ones. And for the hydronet, I'm gonna modify it. So it can be descriptive the the name of this uh, layer so in this case is the hydrological network okay and in this case i can change also this one and this is the stream order
and since we cannot see this one I'm gonna delete it as well so I'm just gonna keep one two three and three to seven that's it and I'm gonna change the order of this so we can have Canales de Xochimilco first and Lagos de Xochimilco second and then the hydrological network and there you go now what I want to do for this uh, uh, legend is to change the the shape of uh, the patches so let's see how we can do that uh, finally uh, you want to add a legend this can be done by clicking on the icon add legend or going to the add item menu and selecting add so if you just uh, deselect auto and as with the north arrow legend patches are limited in QGIS but you can create your own perhaps in another video I can show you how you can create them for now, our best choice is to get them from internet and I will copy the geometry of the patches that I want to use. In this uh, GitHub page, you have a very nice selection of patches that you can use and all of them are free to use. You can either copy the URL of the file, copy and paste the coordinates of the patch you need or download the Kuji style, uh, the Kuji style file with the XML extension directly from GitHub and use it on Kuji's. Um, for this exercise, I just need two patches, one for the canals and another for the lakes. If you look at the web page that uh, they have uh, created in GitHub, they have ordered the files depending on the geometry. For the lakes, I will look for the polygons patches.md and then I will choose the one that I need. Then I will copy the text with the coordinates and then uh, back in the legend item properties, I will double click on the layer where I would like to change the patch. Then in the patch section next to the word shape, click on the color that appears whatever is the color it could be blue it could be red whatever color it appears so in this new section just replace the shape text coordinates by the ones you copied from the web page and uh, you will see immediately the change in your legend from the web page and you will immediately the change in your legend you can go back uh, by clicking on the blue arrow and notice that the color of your patch is the one that you choose when you design your map And uh, the process is the same for lines and points. You just have to, well, in this case, you have to use, if, if you are using this web page, just uh, select the, the patch that you like, copy the coordinates, go back to layout, select the element that you would like to change, erase the information that it's written, and change it from the information that you retrieve from the web page, and that's it. So I repeated this process for the rest of the lines and then after this I just rearranged some elements, I added a title and finally I exported the map uh, in a T format and well you can see the results at the end of the video. And I think that's it for this video and I hope it's enough for you to create your own uh, print layouts. Thank you and good luck.